Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be replacing the thermal pads and the core paste, or the thermal paste on the core. We're going to be replacing that on a ROG Strix 3080. So if you think that's interesting, hit like, subscribe, at the bell, go to CryptoLLC.org. If you're looking for someone to set up a GPU or ASIC mining farm, or you want to buy yourself some ASICs or buy yourself some GPUs. And also, don't forget, Bitcoin saves your wealth, but Jesus Christ saves your soul. So make sure you have both to succeed in life. All right, so let's get started. We got a 3080 here. This is a ROG Strix, a white version here. Let me flip it over and maybe show you guys the front of it. So three fan. It's got thermal pads all over the place here. You can see it. Thermal pads for the VRAM still stuck to the back or to the uh, the copper plate. But it's not really copper, but you know the plate. It got some thermal pads here. This is cooling off these chips over here, power chips and other chips here. You can see lots of thermal pads. One layer here, one layer there, and then you have your VRAMs. So there's. 10 gigabytes of memory. So we got 10 chips, 4411. So that's 10. Uh, it's not very easy to take apart. There's like 10 screws you have to do. Take off the top screws. Um, and there's a couple of, uh, what are these called? Not hex, star screws, whatever it is. So you need a couple of specialized tools here. Anyway, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking off the VRAM thermal pads, the old ones, putting new ones on. So here's the old one here. If I remove it, you know, it's pretty dry. Um, com it com it's uh, trying to analyze it, the quality of this thermal pad. I mean, I think it's a little better quality than Zotac thermal pads. There it is. Okay. Like that. There you go. Okay. And they're not producing any residue, so that's good. Uh, a lot of these thermal pads from Zotac get residue on that thermal pad. That's normal from a from a thermal pad for a Zotac card. It's just the type they use, not conductive. It's not gonna cause any problems. But this one here is more like a solid, so it's not really releasing anything. By the way, I'm using uh, one hand to do this. I'm recording with my left hand. All right, so. Yeah, it's gonna have to wait for me here. So we're gonna remove all these old ones here. And uh, it looks like it's probably, if I get a feel for this thermal pad, I'm trying to guess what type they're using here. It doesn't it doesn't feel so cheap, it actually feels okay-ish. But I doubt they're using anything like a 12MK or a 14MK or a 15MK thermal pad. They're probably using something cheaper than that probably using like six or eight or something like that. So we're gonna put on our good stuff here and remove all of their uh, thermal pads. Now these spots we have here on the card, um, this is the uh, spots from the thermal pad, which is pretty annoying. It kind of leaves like a layer. So I have to wash all that stuff off. The way we wash it is we use a, uh, just like a little piece of, piece of uh, shop towel or whatever. Put some rubbing alcohol on it, right? And then we just take off the uh, old stuff here, kind of wash it off. Now this is rubbing alcohol, get something that's high percentage, so it's not going to cause any problems. This is thermal pad again, or, or uh, thermal pad residue. It's non-conductive. It's not gonna cause any problems if it gets on the board. It's just like, kind of like having a layer of thermal conduct, uh, thermal uh, heat transfer coming off the chips. So it's not gonna cause any problems to the chip. You just gotta get it off the VRAM. So we, you can see we got some here on the uh, the little capacitors, but that doesn't matter. This is this is not gonna do anything. This is just thermal pad leftovers here. Again, non-conductive, not gonna transfer electricity between each other. It's fine. So we're gonna do that for the rest of these chips, and then we're also gonna clean the core here. So I'm gonna do that, and then uh, get back to this video. All right, so our thermal pads are on, thermal paste is on, ready to go here. Got uh, some of that residue on the board, but again, doesn't matter. Doesn't look good, but doesn't matter at all. Everything is ready to go. We got our nice, high-quality thermal paste, nice, high-quality thermal pads. 
everything is clean. Now to put it back together and it should be ready to go. Now what should you expect from changing out thermal pads? Now for Zotex, for gigabytes, we saw 10 degree drop on a gigabyte and 15 to 20 degree drop on the Zotex. So it's gonna be very interesting to know what the drop will be on this card, but coming out of the fact that we are putting on high quality thermal pads and paste, and I'm assuming it's probably around the same, same uh, range, probably like 10 degrees to 20 degree range. So if you are doing this in a you know, hot environment, make sure that you do do this, that you do replace them. If you're in a cold environment, maybe you don't need to. If you're under like 100 degrees, like 95, 90 in a cold environment. All right, let's get me for this video. You know what to do, hit that subscribe at the bell and make sure you subscribe. More uh, videos being gonna be posted with thermal pad replacement. And until next time, bye.